All right, today we're going to take a look at all of the apparatus that we use to perform a titration. And all a titration does is allow us to find the concentration of an unknown solution of either acid or base. And so you kind of see at a glance what's involved, but I'll take you through it step by step and show you exactly what it is that we are going to use and how we use it. First thing that we need is a magnetic stirrer. So you see in this small flask where we have a solution being stirred by a magnetic stir bar. And this is so we don't have to waste time by stirring it ourselves. And on top of that, it keeps the solutions pretty well constantly mixed. Next thing we're gonna need is something called an indicator. And all an indicator does is tell us whether our solution is acidic or basic. It does that by changing color. So you can see here that when our solution is acidic, it's perfectly clear. When our solution is basic, it's this deep uh, pink color, kind of a cool color actually. And it's a funny name, phenolphthalein, and it's spelled really weird, but at least it's easy to remember. The final piece of apparatus is what's called a burette, and it's a long, skinny device that allows us to not only measure volume, but it also allows us to use this little valve at the bottom to meter out very precisely measured uh, amounts of solution. We do that simply by turning this knob. This would be off and this is on and of course you can regulate the speed at which your solution is meted out by how far you turn this valve. It has some interesting markings on the side. We'll take a closer look. It is marked 50 milliliters which tells us that the measurable volume that a burette can accurately tell us is anywhere between 0 and 50 milliliters. We're going to fill this burette with a solution of known concentration. Now, reading a burette is tricky because you want your perspective to be right. And you're reading from the bottom of the meniscus. So I have filled this burette all the way to the top, which for us is zero milliliters. Notice that the meniscus is just touching the zero milliliter mark, and it's important that you have your eye in the right place to read this. And as we dispense our uh, burette, uh, we'll simply read the final volume off the side. So what I've done is I filled this burette with our known. So let's establish what we have. So here's what we know we have one molar hydrochloric acid is our known. That's in the burette. We don't know how much volume we need yet because that's what the titration does. We are going to titrate our unknown, which is sodium hydroxide, and I have currently measured out exactly 50 milliliters. Let me show you what that looks like. So in our flask that is currently being stirred, we have exactly 50 milliliters of unknown molarity sodium hydroxide. We know the volume, we don't know the concentration. We're going to bring this to neutralization. Here's what this means. We're going to add some phenolphthalein to turn it pink. Now that it is a deep bright pink, we're going to add our acid of known concentration until this just turns back to clear. When that happens, we know we have exactly the same amount of acid in solution as base. And that means we've brought it to what we call neutralization. If we know the concentration of base, excuse me, if we know the concentration of acid, and we know the volume of the acid that we added, and we know the volume of our base, we can find the concentration. So let's get to it. We're going to add our acid to our base and pay attention until the color changes back to clear. So here's our setup. We have our burette completely full of our 
concentration of acid that we know is one molar. We do not know the volume of acid that we have to add, but we will know when we get there when the solution turns clear. We have exactly 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide in the flask, and we do not know the concentration. But we know that when the solution turns back to clear, the concentration, the amount of acid and the amount of base will be equal. All we have to do is use the volume to find the concentration. So here we go. Reading the burette, just as the solution turns back to clear, means we added 6.1 milliliters of our acid. So, now we have a known volume of known concentration of our hydrochloric acid, and we have an unknown concentration but a known volume of our base. So let's set up the titration calculations and solve for the unknown. So here's what we know. One molar hydrochloric acid required 6.1 milliliters to titrate our 50 milliliters of unknown concentration sodium hydroxide. That means if we used 0.0061 liters, which is 6.1 milliliters, and our concentration is one molar, that means we used 0.0061 moles of hydrochloric acid. And if it dissociates, that means we have 0.0061 moles of H+. If we had 0.0061 moles of H+, in solution, that requires exactly the same amount of moles of hydroxide to neutralize, meaning 0.0061 moles of hydroxide. And if we got it from sodium hydroxide, that's how many moles of sodium hydroxide we had. So, here is our final answer. It took 6.1 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid to neutralize the sodium hydroxide back to clear. Well, that's 0 0.0061 liters, meaning 0 0.0061 moles if it was one molar. If it neutralized our 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, that gives us a final concentration of 0.122 molar sodium hydroxide, and that's a titration. So let's do it for real, in quotes.